Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are ready for a super beginner friendly home that's basically a blank canvas, you can paint whatever color you want and it's literally based off a square, the Craftsman Foursquare is the one for you. Or Foursquare Craftsman, either way. The Foursquare style is essentially a cube with a roof. If you live in or near any area that saw a big boom in the early 1900s, you've probably seen these in your neighborhood as they were one of the kit homes sold by Sears Roebuck catalog. While they were one of the catalog's best sellers, very few have been built since about 1930. So the majority of the four square homes you see today are most likely just upkept and restored homes that are about 100 years old. But why are they called four square? Each floor is literally made up of four square rooms. Of course, walls can be removed or shifted to some degree, but in a time where toilets were optional, you didn't have to worry about a pesky restroom getting in the way of your squares. The four square style has also been applied to colonial revival and even some art deco homes, but if you're looking for specifically a four square craftsman, you're going to notice very much overhanging eaves and a centralized narrow dormer as sort of a third half story. Don't forget to jump down to the video description for a link to the Pinterest board that contains all of the articles and images I used for references for today's build. All right, let's build what has been called the McMansion of the 1910s. I am starting off on a 15 by 20 today here in Willow Creek. I will be using Seasons a bit just because the Craftsman style, just Seasons carries it through beautifully, so I will be using those, but I'll be sure to call out some base game options as well. As far as lot size, typically you can build any home on any lot size and they're quite scalable. However, the four square was more or less designed to be in compact suburban spaces, so a 15 by 20 or a 20 by 30 is about as big as you're gonna wanna get. We're going to start with a square. You could do a square anywhere from 8 by 8 to probably 16 by 16 is the absolute largest you want to go. That would give you 8 by 8 rooms, which is pretty big. One nice thing about squares is you could just start over here and then count this way till you have your size. So I'm going to be going 10 by 10, and I actually need it further back on the lot. You can be odd or even number. Obviously, if you do an odd number, your rooms won't be exact squares, but perhaps you want your living room to take up slightly more space, so you'd give it the extra square. It can be done. Inside, we are quite literally just going to divide this into four squares and then upstairs we're going to oh draw a square we're going to put the stairs in the corner over here now you can leave this as an entry room perhaps carve out a small space here for a half bath or you can take this wall out and make it a whole living room space and then have kitchen and dining off the back here. Upstairs, we could do another four square-ish rooms. Obviously you need a bit of a hallway with the staircase being there, but most people prefer indoor toilets these days. So we are actually going to start with a little bathroom here and then two four by five bedrooms on either side. This will be another bedroom here and here. And we're going to add stairs or you could potentially add a ladder to get up to the half story, I suppose you could call it up on top. It is extremely characteristic of these builds to have a narrow dormer at the top. So if you don't want to play in the space, you can just make a nice narrow cross set of rooms here. Forget the staircase if you don't plan on actually moving your sims up here. And then to roof it, it will be as simple as adding a hipped roof, pulling out the eaves, and laying down a couple of gables. I am, however, going to show you how to actually make that space playable, which is going to complicate the roof a little bit. I mean, I guess technically you could put some stuff up here, but you can expand your front and back dormers a bit. Mine will be four wide. You don't really want this to be any more than one third of your total sort of space at the front. This is going over a smidge, but this is an absolute wide as far as ratio goes as you'd want your dormers to be. Also, you may not necessarily need these other three lobes. You could have all four, you could just have one or two, possibly just three. Before we get to roofing though, we are going to add a nice front deck here as well as a two-story deck on the back. And I am building this specifically from a floor plan that I have in my Pinterest board. If I put it up on the side screen here, hopefully you can sort of see like where it comes from. But yeah, that's on Pinterest. So if you want some floor plans, you can go over there. This whole house will be up on a bit of a foundation. And I just realized I need to scooch it back one more tile so I can get stairs. So on my 15 by 20 lot, it's going to be two tiles in from the front and back. Now that that's all taken care of, let's talk about our roofing situation. In the end, what we want our roof to look like is just a hipped roof. We can even leave it at the default pitch. However, the issue we're going to run into with this is you can't really play in this space with a giant roof in the way. Now, of course, you could put the walls down, but let's give ourselves a little bit of a better option. So what we're going to do instead is grab this half hipped roof, and I'm going to turn the open gable face toward our wider dormer, and I'm going to make it be six tiles wide. If I bring it out too far, it's going to start clipping in again, which is why I'm not doing that. So I'm going to make this five tiles wide and bring this eave out to then grab a, I'm actually going to change the color of this roof, hang on, and then grab a half gabled roof 
bring it down to one tile and just get rid of those eaves. And that is going to cover up this little gap right here. And then you could just copy this roof piece and this one on all four corners. We do still want to cover this portion right here, so how we're going to do that is grab another half gable, bring it down to one tile wide. It does have to be sticking out from this room at least one tile, otherwise it won't place. He's fine, he just thinks screaming is funny right now. Um, and then hold shift to pull this out. If you don't hold shift, you're going to get that, and shift lets you just move one section of the eave at a time. You can copy and place this right on the back. And then grabbed hipped roofs or gabled roofs to finish off the top. Because we left everything at default pitch, you won't have to scooch anything around. I am going to extend all of the eaves two sections because craftsmen traditionally have quite large overhanging eaves. For our front deck, we're going to roof it with a half gable as well. And to get that same deep eave look, we're only going to bring it to one tile from the edge. And then by extending those eaves and dropping that pitch, We'll get a nice covered porch where the eaves all look extended, which is great, but we don't have to worry about it clipping through the side of the building or overlapping weird. Now if I just grab some normal shingles and place it everywhere, all of our hard work disappears and we're left looking at a totally normal looking roof. Before we do anything else, we need to talk a little bit about color scheme. Craftsmen traditionally have been fairly neutral soft colors. A lot of the craftsman homes can be seen as almost an argument against the very flashy Victorian homes that were also quite popular at the time. So the Foursquare was often a very monochromatic build where you'd pick sort of a color and then use a whole bunch of different shades to do the siding, the trim, the foundation, the doors, all that sort of stuff. However, because paint isn't as expensive as it used to be, especially for colors, you'll often find a lot of restored craftsmen of all shapes and sizes, really in much more bright colors. So we could just go with beige here, or we could pick a slightly more bright color, but again, sticking with sort of the monochromatic color palette, like green or orange, which kind of makes it look like a candy corn house, or even blue, or again, brown, beige, pretty much any color, just sort of stick with something monochromatic. And for siding options, plaster and stucco are options, although siding and brick were significantly more popular. Once you've picked a color palette to use, we can start talking about columns, windows, doors, all that other decorative stuff. Oh, and I suppose we'll add a foundation. Also adding some sort of floor trim, be it extending or just flush to the edges of your exposed decks for your second level and everything can really help make it look more finished. Now we can talk about the decorative stuff. We will have an offset entrance over on this side and you'll want some sort of fairly good side store with windows. Naturally, the Seasons pack has some great options. Although if you are sticking with the base game, picking any sort of windowed door and then putting another window on either side could work really well as well. We'll want to balance that out with a nice big window. And when you're looking at craftsman windows, kind of what you want to see is anything that has multiple panes on the top and then like a solid pane on the bottom or multiple panes in general, but you're not really gonna see a whole lot of just plain old solid pane windows. This base game option is called the craftsman and it's pretty okay. The mega options would work pretty well, the square ones at least. When in doubt sticking with these guys, they can blend into pretty much any home style. I'm pretty much just placing these windows in the middle of my squares. You do want a lot of windows, and I really like these grouped windows because they look like groups of windows, which is uh, very common with a craftsman style. However, for my kitchen here, I do want smaller windows, and I also want a back entrance. So I'm going to place some back doors here, and then some shorter windows so that I have space for cabinets. Upstairs, for a little bit more privacy, I'm just going to stick with these shorter windows. Over here, I do have a wall in the way, but I can still place a group of three, and it will look almost the same. Since we do have a back deck today, I'm going to be adding these doors instead of windows to these walls, and we'll give the bathroom a window too. Why not? Of course, you'll want to add some windows to your dormers. Now that I've moved all my windows around, I don't like how I can't see these windows very well, but I can hit F5 to allow a quarter tile placement and just bring them down a little bit. This is primarily due to the fact that we have the eaves extended so far, but you know, build like a nerd, we have to go for historical accuracy. Very important. Now let's talk about columns. Typically, you want to go with something square. This could work out of the base game or this one, but of course, if you have seasons, I'm naturally going to recommend that one. You'll want stairs coming out in front of your door. I'm going to make my stairs match the width of my door just because I think that looks nice. And for a railing, naturally I'm going with the craftsman, but some good base game options could be this horizontal fencing, of course in a tone that more matches the rest of your build. The simple picket fence, and maybe the prairie style fencing if you want something a little more colorful and slightly more ornate, but still having that like handcrafted wood vibe. You should probably add some columns to the back. 
Now that I have my wood tone picked, I can pick a better trim for this deck piece. And I suppose the back deck can get stairs too. The original floor plan has stairs on the back deck going up to the second deck as well, which I think is kind of cool. I haven't really seen that before. The fence looks interesting. Oh well. For flooring, you're going to go with wood, typically a pretty warm color. And that can just go everywhere, switching out my steps to match a little bit better. And now we can talk about interior doors. And arches, of course. Because this is a pretty simple build style, we're going to go with some fairly simple arches. I'm going to go with the prairie style one, and just have that going between rooms. Now we have done fancier arches before in craftsman builds. The other two craftsmen we've done on this channel, in fact, both have significantly more ornate arches that we built custom. However, with this being a kit home and very much very much a very simple build. Just using plain arches, unless you're going for a more expensive feel overall, is going to be probably the best bet. And if you're interested in learning more about the custom arches, you can check that out. I believe I have a short of it, and if I do, I'll link that here. You can check out the other Craftsman videos if you're interested in learning more about Craftsmans. Much like the outside, traditionally the inside was very neutral colors, grays, browns, possibly some blues, but now that colorful paint is relatively cheap, uh, you can kind of do what you want, but we're still going to stick with that same monochromatic feel. So this is sort of a blue Blue green so I'm going to stick with some of those blue green colors and this more natural brown throughout and having some sort of woodwork along the top whether it was this fancy or not as well as the baseboards very common um, craftsman homes were really known for their woodwork so displaying that even if it is any more I don't say cheap inexpensive way still important I think I'm going to go with this for smaller interior doors, we can of course go with the Seasons door or anything else that has some panels on it. This is going to be a very door filled little area, and if you want your doors to change direction, you can just press the comma and period keys or the greater than and less than keys to switch that up. Now for our bathroom, I'm going to place a bathtub, sink, and toilet. And that's about all we have space for in here. Now if you want to add a fireplace, that's going to go either on this wall or this wall. Either way, you'll have to remove a window or an arch but you could always add windows or arches back on either side. I actually like this better than I thought I would, so I'm going to leave it like that. And I haven't put any lights in today, and I just realized that, but there are so many windows in this build, it's so light inside already. Of course, no build tutorial is going to be complete without at least experimenting with kitchen layouts, so let's work on that. Whatever we do, we'll want to go with wood tones, so for a cheaper, more streamlined counter, the Bland Co. will work just fine. Escargot is nice as well. And I should be able to fit a fairly good sized kitchen in here. If I wanted to shrink down either our back entrance and or this arch here, we could even add a small kitchen table or chest table, easel, whatever else you may put in a Sims kitchen. I don't know. Add some safety rails to the stairs because I'm feeling nice today. And I think all we have left to do is the landscaping. Now there's really not much room for landscaping in a craftsman and even if there was, it tends to be pretty minimal and natural considering the environment around it. I'm going to start by painting a little bit of dirt in the front here and making a bit of a path. If I'm looking to the world around me for plants, looks like I can use these, these, and I think this is supposed to be these. I'm not 100% sure, but we're gonna go with it. I like to use a couple of taller green things toward the actual foundation of my build. I think I don't have enough space for both of these, so I'm going to stick with the fern. You can place multiple objects by holding shift and smooth place items by holding alt. Resize with the bracket keys. I always like to add a few rocks. Not only does this add texture, but it can add some continuity to the world if you have specific rock colors, which can't really see any here. And you can go back through with your terrain paint and finish up painting under any plants, your foundation, any stairs. Let's go ahead and do a little recap. The base of the build will very much be a cube and the placement of the windows and doors will sort of let you know that, hey, looks like there are about four rooms on each level. For the four square craftsmen specifically, you're always going to see at least one very narrow um, dormer here in the front and it may have friends on the sides. You'll also have a nice deep front porch and all your eaves will be overhanging significantly. Your rooms are going to start as four squares. Now, if you scooch a wall this way or that way, or if you just remove one to enlarge a room, that's totally fine, you can do that, but you're going to start with four squares. Upstairs, it won't be exactly four squares because you need some hall space for stairs and whatnot. And if you have a bathroom, it will most likely go on the second story. If you want your final story to be playable, it's really easiest to make sure that a wider portion is three to four tiles wide. You're not gonna go much wider than that and make sure that this dormer portion is no more than one third the overall width of your home. Mine's at four and the overall width is 10, so that's pushing it. That's as absolute as wide as you're going to want to go any wider and you're going to start branching over into other styles. Not allowed in Nerdland. 
These roofs can be hipped or gabled, but the primary portion of your roof will be hipped. With that being said, if you want to learn more about building craftsmen's or Victorians or a handful of other styles, those are all in the playlist linked up here. And the bottom card is the video I mentioned earlier about the craftsman arches. I highly recommend checking that out if you want to add a little bit more pizzazz to your build. It doesn't even have to be a craftsman, it's just I call it the craftsman arch because it's most common in craftsmen's. Thanks for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again tomorrow. Bye!